Chapter 931 Killing Phoenix King The clouds pierced the wall of fire. The cold air could freeze the cells of others, and almost immediately, the flaming phoenix was metamorphosed into its own opposite. It was turned into a statue of ice. Boom. Phoenix King had become ice, and all of his cells had frozen solid. Then, without notice, the composition of his being exploded into minuscule chips of ice that either pelted the field or submitted to the wind and were blown away. The golden flames were gone, and Phoenix King had poofed out of existence in a haze of cold blue dust. He respawned near his spirit statue. The spirit base fell so quiet, you could hear a pin drop. Phoenix King had been utterly annihilated in the blink of an eye, and for a moment, every spirit thought they had slipped into a bizarre and surreal dream. The King of Day was frozen, and he could hardly believe his eyes. Flower Empress' mouth was wide open as if an awe that was trying to masquerade as disappointed shock. Heavenly Empress herself did not expect that the king could defeat Phoenix King so easily, meaning all the Phoenix genes would have to be delivered to the king now. Seeing as she was the one who had convinced Phoenix King to fight the king, she felt tremendously guilty. Kingfire Gene Plus One First Rank Achieved First Rank Reward Self-Spirit Gene Plus Ten Inch Hansen was only a little bit pleased. Receiving 10 self-spirit genes for achieving first place seemed like a lowly reward for the feat. It now seemed to Hansen that obtaining self-spirit genes in the spirit bases would not be easy, and it also told him there had to be other ways to receive them. Phoenix King respawned from the spirit stone with anger, and amidst the fire and fury of his temper, he spared no time in launching himself towards Hansen in the shape of a phoenix. Boom. Hansen cast the skill Water Thunder, which obliterated the flying phoenix into another cascade of giblets. If you lack the courage to commit suicide, I can help you. Hansen's body crackled with a surge of electricity. He was a physical manifestation of terrifying lightning as he approached Phoenix King's statue. When the mad phoenix respawned, Hansen punched him to death again. As soon as he respawned again, Hansen killed him. This was repeated over and over and people were in such shock and awe that they could hardly think straight as they tried to process what their eyes were telling them. Alternating between ice and thunder, Phoenix King kept dying without even being given the chance to breathe. All the spirits watched Phoenix King get slaughtered relentlessly, like livestock being led to a grinder. Ten thousand spirits had come to watch the battle unfold, and not one of them made a sound. They were all in silent fright, as the noise of explosions sounded repeatedly, as if they were on a timer. He is the first rank king spirit of this spirit base. The king is far too overpowered. This thought raced through the mind of every spirit there. The spirits who had shown disdain to Hansen before were now frozen. No one could believe that this was the result of the fight they had come to spectate. Does this mean the king wasn't afraid of Phoenix King at all? Did he just want to collect more king spirit genes before achieving first place? Some spirits finally understood Hansen's initial reaction to the proposition of fighting Phoenix King, and after realizing this, they shouted to the sky. So, the king decided to fight king spirits one by one, in sequential order? And the people who wanted to bully him were those king spirits? The king is so powerful, man. He'd never fear an opponent, or even think of fleeing a battle. The king is invincible. Who was stupid enough to believe he would be afraid of Phoenix King? The sudden reversal of opinion represented just how much spirits adored those who were stronger. More than ever, spirits started to admire and show their affection for Hansen again. For the fire genes he sought, Hansen did not slow down in his repeated slaying of Phoenix King. He kept on killing him until he reached the sum of 100. 100 points was the max he was able to extract, unfortunately. Had he signed a contract, he could have received an infinite amount. Still, the results satisfied Hansen a great deal. He was very appreciative of the fire genes he was able to harvest. All he would have to do next was max out his fire royal genes. Once he did that, his fire element strengths and resistances would be perfect. Once this was achieved, he could practice fire hypergeno arts at a considerably quicker pace. After the fight was over, the king's name became synonymous with the word invincible. Many king spirits continued to despise him but the love given to Hansen from the lower tier spirits was unending. Many royal spirits were all too happy to provide him with spirit genes. Despite receiving so many spirit genes, though, a feeling nagged at Hansen's mind. He was actually quite unhappy. Spirit genes only strengthened a person's talent and proficiencies with elements. 
they did not increase a person's fitness level. The greatest effect they would provide was in the opening of a gene lock. Hansen's fire geno points had almost maxed out. If he practiced fire element skills, his speed in opening gene locks would be far quicker than it would be for other humans. Ordinary humans needed a fitness level of 900 to open their third gene lock. But if Hansen practiced fire element skills, he could open a third gene lock from as low as 600. Whatever fire elemental skill he used could be cast faster and with a greater power, too. But to Hansen, such a privilege was useless. The reason why he was this powerful was all down to his super king spirit body. It put him in a whole different league than other king spirits. Of course, the title of being a super king spirit did not mean that it was stronger than every other king spirit. Still, king spirits that had only opened their first or second gene lock would still be weaker than a base super king spirit. A king spirit that had opened their first gene lock possessed a fitness level that was comparable to the iron bug king. King spirits needed to grow, and their fitness increased as they became stronger. Hansa noticed that by obtaining more self-spirit points, the power possessed by his super king spirit mode would be much stronger. Because super king spirit was stronger, he could defeat king spirits with ease. But to keep going in this manner, without increasing his sum of self genes, the advantages he had would soon be made irrelevant. He needed more, and he realized how difficult such a task would be. And to make matters worse for him, Hansen was still stuck back in the sanctuary, unable to hunt creatures there. Continuing on this trajectory, without increasing his fitness, could one day prove deadly. He could only use Super King Spirit Mode in the sanctuary as a trump card. It was relegated to being a last resort. He couldn't randomly use it anymore. Not before improving the strength of his body. Sanmu, we have finally come to the edge of Thorn Forest. Chu Ming jovially called out to Han Sr. Chapter 932. When next we meet, I'll buy you a drink. Han Sin was incredibly happy at this news. They had run out of food a long time ago, and now they had the opportunity to restock. Han Sin called for Chu Lan Shi and Little Wind to accompany him and Chu Ming in the hunt of creatures. He wasn't going to waste a single second, as he wasn't sure when the shelter would move to the outskirts of the forest again. They did not know which way they were going to go, but where they went seemed to be an absence of thorny brushes and they espied a number of clearings in the distances ahead. After killing a group of iron bugs, they stumbled across a hunting party of humans. Humans? There are humans. Chu Ming looked excited when his eyes fell upon them. Each of them were surprised, and it was a sight that warmed their hearts. It was usually a great joy to come across other humans, as the occasion was rare across the brutal expanse of the Third God Sanctuary. They had heard of a human royal shelter in the vicinity, and after walking an additional 30 miles, they came to a shelter which had many humans strolling in and out. Finally, I'm back to civilization. Chu Ming almost cried at the sight. Han Sen and Chu Lan Shi were glad to have found such a shelter, but weren't half as excited as Chu Ming. After entering the shelter, they informed themselves of what manner of place it was. It was a relief to hear it was good for humans, despite the spirit shelters that weren't too far away. The people in this place were strong and they could fight back and maintain their independence. Whoever was capable of defending themselves were allowed to live there. We have found a place in which we can live and be free. We can have a good life, free from the fear we have had to constantly live through in recent times, Chiming said. Hansen said, if you two like it, then stay. I'm going back, though. What? Why are you returning to that dump? You might die out there, all alone. Chiming looked at Hansen with confusion. I prefer to remain in perpetual adventure. Hansen couldn't explain how he felt well, but this was the closest and most concise way he could express himself. There were a few other reasons, of course, once he did not wish to tell them. Hansen needed that shelter to grow plants and enter the spirit base, something that was far more valuable to him than a safe place to lay his head. In Thorn Forest, there weren't many primitive creatures to find, but he could easily encounter creatures of a higher level. The resources he could get there, with his moving shelter, was far more important. And having a shelter that resided underground, free from any possible attack, was something incredibly rare, and it was not something Hansen was willing to give up. Can't we adventure from the safety of this place? Chuming asked. Hansen wanted to explain further, but much of what anchored his desire to remain in the hidden shelter had to be kept a secret. Chuming, Sin Mu knows what he is doing. Don't try and change his mind. 
What matters is that we will still be friends forever, and distance won't lessen the bond we have established in our time together, Chu Lanshi graciously said, stopping Chu Ming's desire to plead that Hansen remain with him. Hansen looked at Chu Lanshi and said, You are right. We have survived much together. We've been through thick and thin, and straddled precarious lines through life and death situations. This is not something that can easily be forgotten. Chu Ming could not understand why Hansen wanted to go back, and after a few complaints, did not wish to strain their relationship or end their times together on an unhappy note. He stopped trying to change his mind. When Hansen and Chu Lanshi found some time to be alone, she said, You are Ji Yinran's fiancé, aren't you? Your name is Han Sr. You knew? Hansen had a wry smile. Chu Lanchi smiled and told him, There aren't many famous surpasses that go by the name of Han. I figured it had to be you, especially since you were fairly young. Besides, if you were going to select a fake name, San Mu was a bad choice. Hansen said, I didn't mean to lie or hide. It wasn't done in spite. I have many enemies, and I didn't want to bring you any more trouble than I did. When we first met, when I got a firmer grasp on where we were, and was able to acknowledge that where I was, was free of other humans, I didn't mind changing my surname and confiding in you. Chulanchi put her hand out in front of Hansen and said, When next we meet, I'll buy you a drink. I thought you don't drink. Hansen said, shaking her hand. Meeting you again will be quite the occasion, I'm sure. And getting drunk on special occasions seems to be the tradition, haha. Chulanchi took a brief pause and then continued by saying, Don't die out there. Han Senator, I will hold on and anticipate the drink we will one day share. I'm almost thirsty already. Hansen smiled. Before leaving, Hansen provided Chu Ming a tree crab, an iron bug bee soul and a copper fruit for a kickstart. Hansen did not give these to Chu Lanchi because he knew she would not accept them. Hansen felt remorseful, leaving the shelter without them. He felt he was being cold, and he was more disappointed with himself for not being sad about leaving them but by being excited for the adventures that were sure to come. He killed a few iron bugs on his return, and by the time he arrived back at the underground shelter, the skies had been stolen by the night. Being lonely and being alone are two different things, but on this night, I feel the former. Hansen, while he cooked, had summoned Meowth and Golden Growler to talk to. Meowth and Golden Growler would occasionally reply, and it struck Hansen how much more intelligent and human they were following their consumption of the water drops. When there is no one around, it's quite boring. I think it's time I bring Zero here. Hansen said out loud. It should have been a thought, but he was surprised to hear himself talk it out. The reason why he hadn't brought Zero with him yet was because of Chu Ming and Chu Lanchi's company. It would be suspicious to see him always be accompanied by a strange little girl. Now that he was alone, he decided to bring her there. Still, he wasn't sure if he was able to simply teleport her there on a whim. Hmm, I'll try it tomorrow. Hansen looked at the watch and the photo it contained. He asked his mother about it once, on his return to the Alliance, but she had told him she did not know who the man was. She didn't recognize him as someone who belonged to the Han family. Who is this man? And did he kill all these creatures? If he did, what connection does he have to our family? Hansen was starting to get a headache, thinking of this. Regardless, he really was starting to believe his father's death had not been an accident. Chapter 933 I Want Your Jeans The next day, Hansen asked his mother to bring Zero to the teleporter and moment shelter to see whether or not she could teleport. Like before, she came through the teleporter into his shelter. Hansen was quickly delighted. With Zero there, Hansen did not feel as lonely. The shelter, overnight, had again moved into the deeper recesses of Thorn Forest. Upon a small expedition outside, Hansen was able to spot some winged snakes. He thought about engaging them, but when he saw the king amongst them, he promptly turned around and went back inside. Hansen knew he couldn't kill such a beast, but without the intrusions of others, he was free to grow that which he wanted to. For now, he planned on growing the dragon blood tree. Each day, he gave the tree a single drop. It didn't take long for the tree to flourish, and within a few days, flowers bloomed across the well-structured boughs of the tree. If it was to continue in such a manner, Hansen deduced it would not be long before it grew fruit. The mutant class B souls of dragon blood snakes would be very beneficial. If many of such fruits grow, I'll be rich. Hansen was delighted at the results, 
and his mind feverishly pondered the results his harvest would soon bring. Whenever Hansen was bored, he visited the spirit base to obtain more genes. He had an incredible reputation by now, and many royal spirits sought him out to deliver him their genes. The king spirits no longer dared to challenge him. While their pestering was a relief, it was ultimately a disappointment, for it prevented Hansen from being able to gather more of their genes. It looks like I should keep a low profile. Otherwise, my gain of points is going to slow to a crawl, Hansen thought to himself. He had shown a spotlight on himself a number of times now. He had relished in the attention he was giving, and caused constant commotion with the staggering fights and the audiences that would crowd to watch. He knew he had to avoid doing this from now on, and if that didn't work, perhaps even lose. While this prospect seemed promising, the spirit he threw the fight for would be given a super king spirit gene. Then, the truth would be revealed. No one knew Hansen was the king, and he wanted to keep it that way. It would be dangerous for any aspect of his identity to be learned. Being unable to gather king spirit genes, Hansen was no longer too fussed with visiting the spirit base. On this day, he only spent two hours there, seeing what he might have needed. Aside from royal and king spirit genes, the other ranks of spirit genes were almost all maxed out. Without anything to do, Hansen decided to summon Moment Queen. The last time Hansen saw her, she was bawling her eyes out like a maddened woman. Summoning her this time, Hansen did so in the wonder of whether or not she could control the movements of the shelter. If she could control it, then he wouldn't have to roll the dice every day, waiting to see whether or not it had moved to the outskirts of Thorn Forest. When Moment Queen appeared, she did so with an immediate desire to kill Hans Senator, although he despised him. Her attack was not through animosity alone. She wanted to die, and she hoped Hansen would provide her this release. But right before she tried to attack, she stopped. She stood still, while her eyes looked around wildly. Why are you in a king-class shelter? Moment Queen looked around in visible shock. I conquered it. Not bad. Huh? Hansen smiled. Moment Queen looked at him with disdain and said, The creatures these bones once belonged to would crush you with a mere poke. All you need to know is that this shelter belongs to me now. Hansen looked at Moment Queen dead in the eyes and then said, You seem stronger than you did before. Moment Queen seemed spooked by her presence there in the shelter. As she looked around, she said, When king spirits enter a shelter, they become stronger. If I could obtain self-geno points, I could become as strong as the king spirits that populate the third god sanctuary. That sounds good. Hansen eyed her suspiciously and observed how she seemed to look like a newborn king spirit. Whatever the case may be, she couldn't have been any weaker than an iron bug king. If she misbehaved or did something that would incite his ire and require him to kill her, he could do so with ease with his super king spirit mode. He wasn't quite up to the task with his own simple, raw power, however. Where are the spirits here? Moment Queen entered the spirit hall. Do you think I'd still be here if there were spirits? Hansen followed Moment Queen. Moment Queen saw the perfect statue and looked as happy as one could be. But then, her face started to look complicated and she fell silent. You can put your spirit stone inside there? Hansen asked. Would you allow me to? Moment Queen asked in return. After her last betrayal, Hansen had imprisoned her. Yes, but that all depends on the benefits you might be able to provide me, Hansen said. Moment Queen's eyes widened, and she coldly said, I can help you control the movements of this shelter. If I don't, then this shelter will continue to teleport as it does and total ownership of it will be impossible. I like the moving aspect of the shelter. Give me some cold, hard benefits, Hansen said. Hansen would have really liked her to be able to control the position and location of the shelter, but he wasn't quite willing to let her know that now. Well, aside from that, I have nothing. Of this, you know, Moment Queen said, dismally. I want your king spirit gene, Hansen told her. Moment Queen's spirit gene might have been of the space element he much desired, but because she would rather die completely, she would not give it to him. This was his first mentioning of this. Impossible. Moment Queen rejected Hans Sr. Chapter 934 Moment Jane Do you want to be imprisoned in the Sea of Soul from now into eternity? Or would you like to control the shelter? Hansen said, sternly looking at Moment Queen. Moment Queen had a conflicted expression. Humanity acknowledged the existence of spirit bases, but very few knew what they were exactly. Hansen had threatened her with what she feared the most, return to the Sea of Soul, trapped, if she could control the shelter and enter the spirit base, 
she believed she would have a chance to escape him. Of course, Hansen was not entirely trusting, and he practically knew what she was planning. He wanted her to feel hopeless, though, so that she would deliver her Geno points to him. He thought Moment Queen aligned with the rare space element, and she was likely the only spirit he could find who had space genes. Even if he was lucky enough to encounter a space element spirit in the spirit base, the amount he'd receive would be extremely low. And it was almost guaranteed that no space element spirit would wish to wager a vast number of them in a self-fight like Phoenix did. Moment Queen looked at Hansen and said, They took my genes before they booted me back to the second god sanctuary. I couldn't give them to you, even if I wanted to. How do you earn more self-geno points? Hansen wanted to increase his tally. Consume the life geno essence of a super creature that shares the same element as you. Either that, or fruit of the same element, Moment Queen answered, surprisingly forthwith. Let's talk business. Hansen paused a brief moment, eyeing Moment Queen, then said, But before that, you will have to give me one geno point. But I really only have one left. Moment Queen pleaded. Well, it's either that or you return to the Sea of Soul. The choice is yours. Hansen did not believe her. Even if her king spirit genes had been taken away, she had been in the second god's sanctuary for quite some time, ruling over a shelter no less. He firmly believed she had more than one. She had the talent to grow a six-gear tree, after all. In response to the untruthfulness, Hansen raised his hand to send her back to the Sea of Soul. But before he could finish, she quickly said, Okay, okay, I can give you a point. But please, explain the terms of your desired cooperation. Give it to me first, Hansen said. Not wanting to be stuck in the Sea of Soul, she gave it to him as quickly as she could. A light was hastily fired into Hansen's body. King Spirit Time Gene Plus One Hessen believed her teleportation skill had required the space element. He hadn't expected her to possess the time element, instead. Now, what do you want? Moment Queen asked, looking at Hans Sr. There is no rush. Let's discuss these matters slowly. Hansen smiled. The two spoke with each other for a long time after that. She would be given the responsibility of controlling the movements of the shelter on the term that she would obey him. And up until Hansen reached a hundred self-genes, she would have to share half of hers with him. Moment Queen would be allowed to enter the spirit base, but she would have to exit and aid Hansen in hunting creatures on occasion, as well. After they struck a deal, her wish for death subsided for a while. She had hope. Because she now had hope, she was willing to accept Hansen's authority for the time being. She did not want to kill him just yet, either. King Class Time Gene. Eh? She really is quite special. Hansen was overjoyed with this revelation. You said you killed the son of a king, didn't you? If you enter the spirit base, will they find you? Hansen asked. I look different now. They won't find me. What? Did you think I only came back here just so I could be killed? Moment Queen said. No, but that's good. Hansen nodded. Moment Queen observed the statue's forehead, and as she did, a black hole emerged from her and drifted over to fit itself inside the slot. It formed neatly into a spirit stone. A light shot towards Moment Queen, and she disappeared in a flash of light. She had entered the spirit base. Hansen did not tell her about him being a super king spirit, and he most certainly did not want to let her know he was the king. In the spirit base, she could talk freely with other spirits. He had to be careful about what information she had, and could possibly release in spite. If she caused issues for him, though, he could always use his super king spirit mode to enter. Moment Queen had only just managed to arrive back at the Third God Sanctuary, so it was likely she was looking to collect many genes. It'd be a while before she came back out. Hansen did not wait for her, though. Instead, he went to water the dragonblood tree. He believed each flower would bear him a fruit, but he soon realized he was wrong. When the flowers withered, they did not grow fruit. And all that appeared were four grape-sized dragon fruit. Um, why are there only four? Hansen looked bitterly disappointed at the result. Still, obtaining four mutant class beast souls was not all that bad. Pet beast souls that were birthed from plants would already have their battle mode active, so there would be no need for him to spend time raising them. Once the wait for the ripening fruit was over, he'd have four pet fighters. Hansen wouldn't go hunt immediately after that, though. He wanted to wait until Moment Queen returned first. In the meantime, over the course of his wait, he tended to the dragonblood tree and watered it, 
eagerly anticipating the birth of the dragon blood snakes. I wonder how many gene locks they can open? Hansen was feeling hopeful it would be a high number. Mutant pets could unlock six at the max. If it was the child of a creature, they'd only have one open at birth. But creatures born from geno plants were not like this. The more talents they had, the more gene locks they could have opened from birth. Furthermore, the open gene lock numbers were fixed. They weren't like genuine creatures, which could improve and open further gene locks over time. Chapter 935 Zero The Lucky Goddess Moment Queen stayed in the spirit base for the longest time and did not return. Hansen had no fear, though, for he could feel what she was up to. Providing one water drop to the tree every day, it only took another four days for the small fruits that hung from its boughs to increase to the size of an average car tire. The texture of the fruits was peculiar, scaly, and reptilian like the creatures that were supposed to be within. Ping. One fruit finished maturing and fell from the tree. Quickly, and quite ecstatically, Hansen retrieved the fruit and peeled back the layers of its scaled exterior. After he did so, a red light shot out from the interior and entered his sea of soul. Mutant pet beast soul obtained, dragon blood snake. Looking inside his sea of soul, he noticed the presence of a new creature. It was a red snake with four legs. It was more like a gecko than a snake, but not quite. Its skin wasn't leathery like a gecko or smooth like an amphibian. It was more reptilian and scaled like dry, cracked mud. From out of its mouth, a forked tongue rattled. It was definitely a snake of sorts. Of course, Hansen knew appearances could be deceptive, and so he didn't pay too much heed to its odd look. What he was most interested in were its statistics, and that was what he spent much of his time perusing. Mutant Dragon Blood Snake, Second Gene Lock Open. Hansen was a little disheartened at the result. Mutant pets were capable of having six open gene locks, so this was at the lower end of the spectrum. It is fortunate I have another three to test my luck with. Hansen resolved to only be grateful if one of the pets had five gene locks open. Ping. Another dragon fruit fell from the tree. Hastily, Hansen scrambled over to pick it up. When it was in his hands, he peeled away the layers, all the while saying, God, please bless me with a pet that has five of its gene locks open. Amen. After the layers were peeled and removed, another red light burst forth like a beacon and entered Hansen's sea of soul. Uncaring for the little creature's appearance, he raced straight for the statistics. Mutant Dragon Blood Snake. First gene lock open. F asterisk CKU. Hansen wanted to flip the nearest table he could find, as this was the worst possible result one could receive. Although mutant creatures had a high fitness level, ones that had only opened their first gene lock were unlikely to be able to take down anything greater than an ordinary creature. Since Hansen wanted to take down mutant creatures on his own next, this pet was useless. It looks like I've been praying to the wrong god, Hansen thought to himself. The third dragon fruit dropped from the tree and hurtled to the ground, but before he went over to pick it up, he requested that Zero bring him water. When she brought the bucket over, he washed his face and summoned his iron bug armor. Hansen approached the fruit and started peeling it. As he did so, he said, God, it's me again. Perhaps you didn't get the message last time but I request that you bless me with the fortune to receive that which I most desperately need. I will sacrifice lambs, goats, or whatever in your name, if that is what it's going to take. Please, God. Amen. After he finished peeling it, a red light moved to Nestle and Han Sin Sea of Soul once more. Mutant Dragon Blood Snake. First gene lock open. After hearing the voice, his face blackened. He shouted, Oh, come on. This is not even funny. Seeing the three snakes, Hansen wanted to bang his head into the nearest concrete surface. The final dragon fruit fell from the tree, and considering his current string of bad luck, Hansen felt reluctant to open it himself. Zero, help me peel it. He hoped Zero would be luckier than he was. Zero approached the fruit and gently started peeling it with her small and delicate hands. When she was done, a red light shot into her forehead. Hansen pointed at Zero and asked, Hey. I thought you couldn't use beast souls? Zero could not eat the flesh of creatures, and neither could she make use of beast souls. This was because she did not have a sea of soul. Her situation was similar to the Shura in that regard. But with ease, the dragon blood snake entered her forehead, signifying she now had a sea of soul. Hansen had once tried to send her a beast soul in the past, but it didn't work. He knew for sure she had no sea of soul, 
But clearly, things were different now. Zero looked at Hansen but did not say anything, and the expression she wore made it seem as if she didn't know what to say. Hansen tried sending her one of his other, now useless dragon blood snakes, and the transfer actually worked this time. What is this? Hansen was shocked with this revelation, but judging from Zero's relative silence, it seemed as if she too was unsure what had happened or what had changed. Zero merely stood where she was, staring back at Hansen at a loss for words. Hansen asked Zero to return the snakes to him, and lo and behold, they were transferred back to Hansen correctly. Her sea of soul seemed to function just as any others would. Was she too young before or something? Perhaps that is why her sea of soul had not yet activated. Hansen mulled over this curious development with great interest. After thinking about it some more, her being too young may have indeed been the correct answer. He observed Zero's figure some more and noticed she appeared a little more grown up than she had previously. Rather than a child, she looked more like a teenager. That being said, she should have fully grown up a long time ago. Why this was happening now befuddled Han Sr. Humans need to be 16 before they can enter the first god sanctuary. Before 16, you haven't fully grown up, thus the ineligibility. It is true she is not a pure, average, run-of-the-mill human. So is her slow growth a result of this peculiarity? Hansen wondered some more. He couldn't prove his theories, but looking at her matured facial structure, it seemed likely. Regardless of what the cause was, Hansen was just happy she could now use beast souls. Hansen asked her if she could receive geno points from the consumption of meat, but she merely shook her head. Hansen took a look at the dragon blood snake she had obtained and returned to him, in the desperate hope her fruit opening result was better than his own three tries. Mutant Dragon Blood Snake, sixth gene lock open. Hansen's jaw dropped to the ground. He ran over to Zero, picked her up in his arms, and started spinning about with her. Then, he kissed her on the cheek, telling her, My dear little Zero, you are my lucky goddess. Yes, yes you are. You just got me the best snake possible. Chapter 936, Night Tree. Blood Dragon Snakes were of the blood element. With every gene lock that they had opened, their powers improved by a great deal all across the board. Their speed and strength, however, were given an exponential boost. Even a blood dragon snake with only two open gene locks would be considerably stronger than Han Senator to receive a blood dragon snake with six open gene locks was a tremendous thing, and it was sure to lay waste to any creature it fought. The fitness level of ordinary creatures was 3 to 600. Primitive was 6 to 1200. Mutant was 12 to 1800. Sacred Blood was 18 to 2400. Humans had yet to gauge the fitness levels of super creatures, but it was estimated that they had a fitness level of at least 3000. There was quite a gulf separating Sacred Blood and super creatures in this sanctuary. To bridge that fitness gully, newborn super creatures and newborn king spirits were viable targets. Newborn king spirits would not be unlike the spirits Han Sound had encountered in the first and second spirit bases. Their fitness was comparable to that of a sacred blood creature, with some being a little higher. But when challenging creatures that were of the same tier as a human, creatures always proved stronger. Humans couldn't go against creatures unless they had a clear advantage. With that being said, it was more difficult for creatures to open their gene locks. Their control of energy flows was not as efficient as human hypergeno arts in harnessing and using power. Receiving a snake with six open gene locks, was an incredibly rare gift for Han Senator. It had a base fitness level of 1,500, but the six open gene locks boosted that to the region of 2,000. It was a creature that could hunt sacred blood creatures effortlessly. The dragon blood snake would have destroyed the iron bug king with ease, and yet, it was likely that the other three snakes he had received would have been the ones wrecked if such a fight took place. Any sacred blood creature, with a single open gene lock, would have had what it took to destroy those three snakes. They wouldn't perform too well against mutant-class creatures, either. It was strange, though, as many people would value such pets. Other humans would need whatever help they could get, and they'd view even the weaker snakes as formidable pets to aid them in the third god sanctuary. I would like to send them to Chulanshi, but how am I supposed to explain how rapidly the dragon blood snakes were grown? I guess I have no choice but to sell them, Hansen thought to himself but thinking about this made him frown. Moment Queen had yet to return from the spirit base, and by now, he was getting impatient. He summoned her to return. 
She had become addicted to the acquisition of power and Geno points, so she was unhappy at having Hansen yank her out so abruptly. You'll have plenty of time to earn Geno points, so maybe now you can help me move the shelter someplace safer, Hansen said. I can move it, but where is safe, exactly? Moment Queen asked. Hansen did not know either, but Thorn Forest was not an infinite woodland. If they were to travel in one direction or another, they'd eventually arrive at an outskirt of some sort. Acknowledging this, Hansen merely pointed in a direction. Moment Queen moved in the direction Hansen wished for her to go. Unfortunately, the distance the shelter could travel was limited, and it could only move a certain amount a day. After the move, they were still deep inside the webbed brush of Thorn Forest. The next day, they were still there after the subsequent move, too. And so they were after the next few moves following that. Where is this? Hansen saw a big tree ahead of him in Thorn Forest. It stood half a kilometer from the shelter, a goliath tree that stood proud and firm, its verdant head standing 40 meters high in the sky. Curiously, it looked as if many people had been strung up and left to hang, dangling from the thick boughs of the tree. Fortunately, upon closer inspection, Hansen realized his vision was just a misinterpretation of what they actually were. They were fruit, and only human in shape. While they looked human, they were slightly bulky. It was as if they were armor-clad humans, and with such protective gear, no hint of flesh could be seen. Hansen thought they looked similar to the steel-clad knights that hailed from medieval Europe. With their helmets connected to the tree, it was a strange sight. Are they alive? Hansen counted the six armored knight fruits. This is a sacred blood-class knight tree. They grow sacred blood-class loyal knights, Moment Queen explained, as she too calculated the breadth of the remarkable tree that stood before them. They're sacred blood creatures? Hansen asked, before going on to say, should we kill them before they mature? Moment Queen looked at Hansen as if she had just witnessed his brain cells implode. She asked him, why would you do that? You can't eat them. And when they mature, they will never betray the first person their eyes fall upon. Really? When will they mature, then? Hansen said, jovially. Moment Queen looked at the tree and said, well, sacred blood trees take a few thousand years to mature. This one will take another thousand, is my best estimate. I can't wait that long. Hansen frowned, but his frown soon vanished upon a sudden realization. But that's okay, let's bring it with us. Stop moving the shelter, and let's go dig it up. Pa, you think you can transplant a sacred blood tree? Moment Queen found it funny, and she giggled under her breath. Just do it. Hansen did not explain and just rallied his four snakes and little wind to accompany him on the way to the tree. Moment Queen followed. Not long after, her face curdled as she noticed something amiss. She called out, Stop. Something is wrong. What is it? Hansen looked at her with confusion. Look at the ground. They were only three meters away from the night tree at this point. When Hansen looked down, all he could see was yellow soil. Still wondering what she was referring to, he asked, Why? What is it? Is this something special? Don't you think it is strange? How can such sordid, ill kept ground birth such a magnificent tree? Moment Queen asked. Hansen used his Dong Shin aura to scan the vicinity, and it was just as she said there was no life force around or in the soil below. Chapter 937 Disloyal Knight. This is weird. Hansen frowned. Only the night tree had a life force in the vicinity. Maybe the tree absorbed the life from the soil all around it? Hansen asked, looking at Moment Queen. All plants absorb energy from the ground, but they never take more than their fair share. If there is an insufficient amount of nutrients available for its growth, it does not drain the surrounding area. It just accepts its own demise. It would not grow, Moment Queen said, with her eyes fixed on the night tree. The tree has a problem? Hansen said, as he had the six nights that hung from the boughs. Moment Queen replied, yes, it has a big problem. For this tree to grow, with dead earth all around, should be impossible. Hansen nodded to display his understanding, and as he turned back to watch the tree, his face turned grim. There is something amiss with the fruit, also. Hansen's forehead flexed again. Why? What do you see? Moment Queen asked, with her own ardent curiosity. Hansen, with his eyes on the six night fruit, said, The night tree is strong, as we have surmised. But the fruit it bears are weak. And you said it would take another thousand years for them to mature? They seem too weak to adhere to your estimate. And. Hansen froze. And. What? Moment Queen was not used to the way Hansen was speaking. 
This night tree has seven fruit, actually. There is one behind the tree, but it avoided our attention at first, Hansen explained. There is another one? Moment Queen's face changed, and so she went to the other side of the tree. Hansen brought the dragon blood snake and little wind with him to circle the tree. He was keen to get a better look, but he made sure to keep his distance. On the other side of the tree, the fruit there was different than the other six. It was similar in shape, but it didn't look quite as natural. It was more like a statue of a knight. The other six wore bright steel armor, but this one wore green copper armor. Its presence there was a mystery. Hansen felt a powerful energy coming from the knight, and the other six combined seemed to be no match for the green copper enigma. As Moment Queen's eyes fell upon it, she exclaimed, Disloyal Knight. It is a disloyal knight. The tree has birthed a disloyal knight. What is that? Is there a difference between loyal knights and disloyal knights? Hansen looked at the green copper fruit in confusion, and so he asked Moment Queen to clarify. Well, of course there is. Duh. They aren't the same type of fruit? Can apples grow on a peach tree? Moment Queen retorted. Hansen did not know much about botany, so he frowned and said, Maybe it was lonely on its own tree. Hey, do you think a disloyal knight will be loyal to me like the loyal? Knights? Moment Queen looked at Hansen with eyes of fire, wondering whether or not his stupidity was genuine. She told him, No, of course not. Are you serious? Disloyalty is the opposite of loyalty, and so the disloyal knight is the opposite of a loyal knight. If you're the first person it sees, consider yourself marked. It will be your greatest nemesis, a foe that will not relent in its pursuit of you until you are dead. Moment Queen continued in her speech, saying, I once saw an emperor grow a disloyal night tree. It hadn't matured yet, and he said it would take 9,000 years for it to grow the single disloyal night it would bear. Who? So that means it's a treasure. That's some good stuff, right? Can we get a beast soul if we kill it? Hansen asked. Moment Queen did not answer him directly, and she merely continued on from her previous dialogue. Do you know what he did to grow that disloyal night tree? What did he do? He didn't bury a real knight beneath that tree, right? Hansen wondered. Moment Queen answered, 10,000 night spirits cannot compare to the strength of a single disloyal knight. It could very well be a super creature. At the very least, any ordinary disloyal knight can be birthed to the rank of a berserk sacred blood creature. Could you answer my question, please? The emperor that wanted to grow the tree, what did he do? Hansen asked. Moment Queen said, before he grew it, he had a grand expanse of land dedicated to the cultivation of night trees. There were over 10,000 of them. But when the disloyal knight was born, they all withered and died. Um, okay. But that at least explains why there is no life force in the area around this tree, Hansen said. Ah, but there's another problem. Disloyal knights are birthed on trees of their own. They cannot grow on a traditional knight tree. I remember this emperor saying that without the energy of the loyal knights, the disloyal knight could not grow. What? Do you really think this place wants had thousands of night trees? Moment Queen said. Hansen looked around and replied, I'm not sure, but this is deep inside Thorn Forest. Thorns clog every path, and as such, there cannot be many trees. Even if there was, the disloyal knight should not be growing on the same tree. Unless. Moment Queen said. Unless what? Hansen asked, inquisitively. He did not know much about geno plants or other botanical fields so he needed Moment Queen to explain everything she knew or guessed. Unless a disloyal knight died beneath this tree, and the loyal knight tree absorbed the deceased disloyal knight and somehow mutated, Moment Queen explained her line of thought. And what's the bottom line, if that is what has happened? Does it benefit us in any way? Hansen wasn't really interested in how the tree was grown, only what rewards he might be able to reap. If things are indeed like this, then maybe the disloyal knight will be different and we'll be able to claim it, Moment Queen said. Chapter 938 A Knight That Opens His Eyes How do you reckon I can claim it? Hansen asked. Moment Queen shook her head and said, Well, the chances would be slim. And besides, look at it. It's going to take at least another thousand years for it to mature. You'll be old and gray by then. One thousand years is not that long, and furthermore, we can bring it into the shelter. Hansen did not seem apprehensive or wary in the least. With the water drops Hansen possessed, the thousand years could be reduced to a mere three. And Hansen was willing to wait that long. The disloyal knight was a berserk sacred blood creature, and if he was lucky, 
the scales could tip and result in it being a fully-fledged super-creature. Waiting three years for that opportunity would be tremendously worth it. But Hansen needed to know whether or not he could claim the disloyal knight. If he couldn't, then he'd be the sole, lifelong target of the violent fruitborn soldier. Don't even think about it. It's hard enough to grow sacred blood plants, but to unearth and move one someplace else is mere foolishness and will ruin what has already grown, moment Queen implored. Just tell me how to claim the disloyal knight, would you? Hansen said. Although it is a disloyal knight, it has grown on a knight tree. This may result in it obeying the first person it sees, but... Hansen always hated, but so he said, just spit it out. He is a disloyal knight, and you can't deny what you are forever. Genetically, it's a disloyal knight, and that's what it's going to be. Even if it obeyed you, initially, the traditional, unwavering fealty of a loyal knight would fade over time. It would only be a matter of time before it betrayed you. It could hurt you as much as it hurts others, Moment Queen explained. If that loyalty lasts 100 years, I'd say it's worth it, Hansen said. A hundred years was nothing to Hansen, and he could be as strong as a super creature himself in that time. The knight would be helpful in its early years. He could use it to kill Goliath monsters with the greatest of ease. Hansen, learning this about the disloyal knight, commanded his snakes to unearth the tree and transport it back to the shelter. Moment Queen did not say anything, but she found the scene quite amusing. It would have made sense for an emperor to move a tree, but for Hansen, who had only just entered the third god's sanctuary, it was a humorous joke. She thought he was being a little too big for his britches. Still, she would not stop him. Ultimately, it would not be her business, so she was happy just to sit back and watch. If you don't need me, then I'll return to the spirit base. Moment Queen was eager to get back to earning Geno points. Hansen waved her off, knowing she would not aid in the tree's excavation anyway. The soil around the tree was very hard, but the snakes were powerful and it did not take them long to dig through. This was especially true of the snake with six of its gene locks open. The speed at which it worked was remarkable, and it had no trouble committing to the task they had been commanded to perform. The roots beneath the earth were slowly revealed, and they were as thick as barrels. The roots were also long, and it proved impossible to move the tree as well as the roots. Hansen commanded that they bite the roots off. They did so, but it wasn't easy. The roots were harder than stone, and three of them failed, only leaving light bite marks in the material. Only the dragon blood snake with six of its gene locks open was able to cut off the excess roots. But after the snake bit off one root, the tree began to shiver and tremble. The six loyal knights were like ghosts, swinging from the boughs of the tree. Boom. One loyal knight disconnected and hit the ground. One after another, so did the others. They did not collapse onto the ground, but instead, they landed on their feet like armor-garbed mannequins in a museum. Hansen took a step back not sure what to expect, and allowed Little Wind and his number one dragon blood snake to protect him from the front. He also made sure to summon his armor, just in case. What have we here? Didn't Moment Queen say it would take a thousand years for them to grow? Why would they detach now? Hansen looked at the six figures, twirling the red dagger in his hand. Suddenly, the loyal knights opened their eyes. They looked at Hansen and the dragon blood snake beside him. Wait, these are loyal knights. So that means they'll obey me upon seeing me, right? But if the snake is in front of me. Hansen regretted using the snake for protection, but suddenly, one of the loyal knights threw a punch towards it. The other five followed and did the same, throwing fists towards the stalwart snake. They were much weaker than sacred blood creatures, but they were undoubtedly greater than mutant class types. Did moment lie? They are attacking whatever they see. Hansen commanded the dragon blood snake and Little Wind to fight back against their fruity aggressors. Boom. A light rose from the feet of one of the loyal knights, then it punched the snake. The snake was sent flying. Hansen saw the rest of the knights generate an aura, one that rose from their feet, also. Three of them were graced with a halo atop their heads. Two of them had two halos, whereas one had three. The more halos they had, the more powerful they were. Hansen thought it might have signified the number of gene locks they had opened. The halos did not deal extra damage, but they buffed the knights in a variety of ways. Not that Hansen cared much for this. They hadn't finished fully maturing, and they had been deprived of adequate nutrition. Hansen guessed the pets under his command could deal with the foes before him. It's lucky the disloyal knight has not decided to join them. 
Had it chosen to, I might have been done for, Hansen thought. But then, he looked towards the figure of his musing and was given a shock. He did not know when it had happened, but the disloyal knight's eyes were open. They were fixed on Hans Sr. Chapter 939 Rare Disloyal Knight Hansen was taken aback. For now, it was lucky that the disloyal knight had not left the tree. You're nowhere near done. There's no way you're coming down from there. Hansen looked at the disloyal knight and felt a little safer. Hansen, clutching the dagger in his hand, turned around and attacked one of the loyal knights that were advancing. The dragon blood snakes took one knight each, and Little Wind engaged one, two. The loyal knights were almost as strong as the dragon blood snakes, and only the one with three halos had a noticeable advantage in strength. Fortunately for all involved, it was the dragon blood snake with six active gene locks that chose to engage that knight. The skittering slithering fiend was quick on its feet, and it leapt at the armored nemesis to scratch it and draw blood. Little Wind fought against a knight that had only one gene lock open, and thus had only one halo. His fitness was pretty low, all things considered, but he had four gene locks open. The wind attacks the furry fighter employed ravaged the defenses of his enemy. Hansen used his sacred blood armor and dagger to engage his target, and he was doing well in the fight. He suffered a few hits, but the armor was strong enough to keep him protected. Katcha, the dragon blood snake, with six open gene locks, found an opening to dig its teeth into the neck of the loyal knight it had engaged. The vicious teeth sunk into the neck with ease, and it tore the entire head off the knight's shoulders in a gruesome display. Before the head could hit the ground, though, the snake spun around and swallowed it. Sacred blood creature loyal knight killed. No beast soul gained. The flesh is inedible. Wow, these things are pretty weak. It looks like the disloyal knight really has been hogging all the energy. Hansen was overjoyed, thinking he could still one day claim it. And the fact that they were weak was good, as he wouldn't have to exhaust himself in the battle despite the lack of meat he would receive. With that being said, though, he wouldn't mind getting one of the beast souls. A sacred blood beast soul was, after all, a sacred blood beast soul. Roar. The dragon blood snake leapt towards another knight. Against the dragon blood snake with six gene locks open, the other knights on the field didn't stand a snowflake's chance in H asterisk LL. The heads of four loyal knights were quickly severed and gobbled up by the snake. As impressive as this was, Hansen was disheartened by the lack of beast souls he received. The other two loyal knights were still doing combat. With the situation under control, Hansen decided to turn around and look at the disloyal knight to see if anything had changed. Eerily, it was still there, staring back at him. But with the disloyal knight being unable to move, Hansen was not afraid. The snake finished off the other loyal knights, but still, he received no beast soul. Today's luck is far too poor. Hansen commanded the snake to get back to work, excavating the tree for transport. Three snakes dug the earth around the tree, while the strongest went abiding through the roots. All of a sudden, the disloyal knight began to scream in agony with a shrill, inhuman voice. It was still connected to the tree, though, and Hansen was confident that it couldn't dislodge itself. Stop screaming, you big baby. I'm only moving the tree. I'm not killing you. Hansen said to the knight. The disloyal knight seemed to hear what was spoken to him, and it looked down on Hansen with murder in its eyes. Hurry up, snaky boys. Dig faster. Hansen rushed the snakes, just in case something unfortunate was about to happen. An unnerving feeling had managed to latch itself onto the back of Hansen's mind, and slowly the feelings of concern for ill happening simmered. It brought him discomfort, and he thought something foul would soon happen. Moment Queen had told him that the knight would obey the first person it looked on. It had indeed seen Hansen, but still, it looked rather hostile. Perhaps I should ask Moment Queen about this. She might be able to shed some light on the issue. Much to her chagrin, Moment Queen was summoned back. Can't you leave me alone for a minute? I'm trying to earn Geno points. What do you want? Moment Queen sounded a little moody. What you said was incorrect. You have some explaining to do. Hansen then proceeded to tell her what had occurred in her absence. Moment Queen eyed the dead bodies that littered the site and said with genuine surprise, Wow, that is weird. It looks like what I hypothesized was reversed. The disloyal knight was not affected by the loyal knights, but it was the loyal knights that were affected by the overbearing force of the disloyal knight. I think it made them disloyal. Does that mean I won't be able to tame it? Hansen asked, quickly gesturing for the snakes to stop digging. 
I suppose, moment Queen said. Are you positive? There is no other way I can get that knight to follow my commands? The emperor must have had a way, surely, Hansen said. Yes, but it doesn't work for ordinary people, moment Queen said. How do you know that? Hansen asked, looking at the disloyal knight. Easy, it requires domination. If you could dominate the disloyal knight, prove to it that you are the alpha and that you are unequivocally superior to the disloyal knight in strength, it wouldn't betray you. It would follow you. But do bear in mind that this thing, once matured, might actually end up being a super creature. Toppling a foe such as that would be no small feat, Moment Queen explained. And there is no other way besides that? Hansen asked with a frown. If there is, I have not heard of it. This disloyal knight infected the entire tree, though, so don't do anything reckless. Sometimes it's best to just cut your losses and quit while you're ahead. Just as Moment Queen finished her speech, a roar sounded. Following that, the noise of breaking wood came from high up in the tree. The disloyal knight had broken its tie to the tree. It looked as cold as ice, as the back of its copper armor was stained with blood. It looked broken there, also, as if it had not finished growing. Chapter 940 Frightening Glory The disloyal knight cried out. Its copper armor glistened in the midday sun, as it teleported in front of Hans Sin and tried to strike his stomach. The disloyal knight moved too quickly, and Hansen took the punch. The force lifted Hansen from his feet and sent him hurtling a couple dozen meters, toppling several trees as he went. When the arc of his launch led him to the ground, a deep crater was left in his shape. His sacred blood armor was dented, and its metal was cracked. Blurk. Hansen spat out blood. D asterisk him in it. Why did I react so slowly to that strike? I should have been able to dodge that. As Hansen reflected over what had just happened, the disloyal knight did not relent in its pursuit of Hans Senator. It came over to where he lay and tried to strike him again. Hansen commanded his four dragon blood snakes to writhe together and protect him like a shield. Ping! The disloyal knight struck the barricade, with the fist landing firmly on the head of one of the snakes. The snake was pulverized immediately as a squelching noise greeted the knight's closed fist. The beast's soul had been killed just like that. The dragon blood snakes unfurled and leapt towards their aggressor in an attack, but the disloyal knight dodged. One snake aimed for the knight's helmet, but just as it flew close, an open hand was raised. The gauntlet captured the airborne snake and then closed hard, turning the wriggling creature into jelly. Another snake was killed. In a short amount of time, the disloyal knight had managed to damage Hansen and kill two of Hansen's mutant class pet beast souls. Moment. What are you waiting for? If I die, you die with me. Hansen called for Moment Queen to act. If this had happened any earlier, she would not have cared for his plight, and instead would have opted to die alongside him. But she had recently been given hope, and the promise of a brighter future not locked inside the Sea of Soul. She had to do something. She was not willing to watch Hansen die. Moment Queen gritted her teeth and raced towards the disloyal knight. She would do what she could, but she had only recently started to gain strength through the collection of Geno points in the spirit base. She wasn't in her prime, despite her willingness to aid Hans in the best she could. Her body was little greater than a young king's spirits. Her speed was exceptional, but overall, her fitness level was lower than the snake that had its sixth gene lock opened. This speed of hers was no trivial factor, however. Her genes allowed for the control of time, and she could slow down the disloyal knight with it. Hansen commanded the other two snakes to strike, while Little Wind cast Wind Blade and Air Cannon. But this didn't yet suppress or put the disloyal knight at a disadvantage. It managed to kill another snake, effortlessly. The only one left alive now was the one with its sixth gene lock open. D asterisk him in it. Its halo weakens others, Moment Queen called out, as she evaded an attack that came for her. Her long hair was given a trim by the disloyal knight. Had she moved any slower, it would have been her head that was cut off. I see that. So, what can we do? Hansen briskly asked, as he observed the two copper halos above the disloyal knight's head. The reason Hans Sound had been unable to dodge the initial attack was clear now. It was all because of those halos. The disloyal knight's halo did not just slow people down, it also weakened their very bodies. Ping. The disloyal knight punched the last remaining snake. It was not killed. But the attack was so strong that it sent the snake reeling backwards, squealing as it spat out blood. The disloyal knight was not powerful enough to one-hit kill a sixth gene lock snake. 
This knowledge comforted Hansen to a certain degree, and it made it look increasingly likely that the disloyal knight had dislodged from the tree too early. It wasn't ready for prime time, and it wasn't a berserk sacred blood class creature yet. Hansen clutched his red dagger and cast his dong shinora. Now Hansen was able to observe just how the halo worked, and he was able to calculate how much it weakened others. With the snake and moment queens kiting, Hansen would be able to get behind the fruity fiend. Unfortunately, though, they'd still be at a disadvantage. Little Wind fired its blades of wind and finished casting its air cannon. Unfortunately, they did not help all that much. The attacks were little more than a stiff breeze to the disloyal knight. The knight had a great level of fitness, and its halo was strong. Its punches were mighty and destructive. When the red dagger cut the copper light of its fist, no damage was done. So, Hansen resolved to watch its movements more and get a firmer grasp on how the opponent acted. Previously, in grievous times such as this, he'd activate his Super King Spirit Body Mode. Using it in such a dire situation would usually ensure a victory, but alas, he couldn't. Ping. Moment Queen teleported directly behind the disloyal knight and tried to punch the bloody, torn place in its armor where it had prematurely ripped itself loose from the tree. But all of a sudden, the disloyal knight's body shone brightly and blocked her attack. It was close, but no cigar. Moment Queen's fist bled after punching the light-imbued protection that now coated the foe's armor. The dragon blood snake roared and attempted to sever the knight's head from its body, but the knight was able to move away, turn, and wallop the snake's head. The snake fell to the ground. Now, Hansen appeared behind the disloyal knight and threw a punch. He had used a stealth skill, one that didn't allow the disloyal knight enough time to notice and deflect the punch. Still, its body glowed in order to better absorb the damage that would come from the incoming fist. Hansen knew there was much power in that glow, but he was not afraid. His left arm was raised as it gathered frost and lightning, and his right arm bore the dagger. 